get this baby out of me. I am done. You were not listening to what they were saying. (laughs) I don't understand. It's like... You try to have a baby and listen to what they're saying. Well... In this video, we are going to talk about what it was like to have a baby during a pandemic. We're going to talk about what happened, what we did, how it went, how we handled it, all the things. So this is a little bit different than the videos that we normally do on this channel. So we would love it if you could leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, how you liked it. And if you want more behind the scenes videos like this, we'd love to do that for you. And if you want to see me more. Because he's awesome. This is Matthew, by the way. He's my husband. Hi, I'm Matthew, the husband. My other half. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell because in a couple of weeks, we're going to be releasing a video on the study strategies that I use to get straight A's in nursing school. It's not one that you want to miss, friend. I promise you. You absolutely must watch that video. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. So what was it like to have a baby during a global pandemic? In a word, bananas. It was very different moving from January to February, then to March, (laughs) then to April. Things were changing constantly, so we really had to adapt very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the first change that we made was that I canceled all my prenatal appointments. So back in February, we did not know how big this was going to be. You know, how big of an impact this would have on having the baby, on our life, after the baby, all of the things. And because he was due in April, we thought we had plenty of time. So back in February, we were like, we have plenty of time. Yeah, that's, this, no will, big this deal. will blow over in, in a few. Just just give it yeah. a second. It's, it's yeah, no big deal. Give it some time, a month, four <laughs> weeks max. It'll be fine. <laughs> and then late February, March, we realized this is not going away. (laughs) This is not going to change. We need to start planning for what to do. (laughs) We need to have a backup to the backup (laughs) to the backup plan, right? So I ended up canceling all of my prenatal appointments. I did not want to go to the clinic. I don't I didn't want to be anywhere <laughs> where yeah, we could possibly we get were, sick. We were social distancing before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, we were, so, for sure. Um, and we were granted, too, this is, this is our second, so you were kind of mm-hmm. confident that you have kind of felt that like you knew the signs and that yeah. you, you felt okay. So you felt confident that, you know what, these prenatals aren't They're not dead <laughs> So, especially okay. in the time. Don't do this. <laughs> this is like, if you're having a baby, please keep your prenatal appointments. That's probably more recommended. But I decided to cancel all of mine. And so, yeah, we did the... the things that you would do if you cancel all your prenatal appointments, right? We were taking my blood pressure at mm-hmm. home, making, that was really probably the biggest thing for me. Um, but we, I've never had blood pressure issues, glucose issues, anything like we're, we, you were also super, taking your glucose. Yeah. We were taking glucose yeah. too. I was super low risk and super low risk. So I had no problem canceling it personally, not recommended though. <laughs> so that's you don't cancel them. Um, but that was the, the biggest, the first change that we really made early on in the day, because I just did not want to go to the clinic, didn't, you know, I didn't want to leave the house. So, and I was also pretty sure that he was going to come early because it was our second and our first child was on his due date. He was born on his due date. So I was pretty sure that our second was going to come early and he did two weeks early. So I was so glad that <laughs> that, that yeah. ended up, you know, it, we kind of missed the whole, probably the biggest, um, you know, string of this. I think he was born at a pretty good time when all this stuff was going down. So that was a blessing. We did end up calling the hospital every single day. So in the weeks leading up, probably like when I hit 36 and a half, 37, I started calling the hospital every single day yeah. to make sure that we knew what to do. You know, everything's changing so fast. Yeah, it was fast. pretty crazy that, I mean, during that time, yeah, literally every day we were finding out something new and yeah. protocol was changing. So, yeah, we felt we needed to call every day and it's yeah. it, it was fun 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 to see like all the changes and really what what new things will they throw at us this time yeah no kidding and the nurse the charge nurse actually told me she's like yes you should be calling every single day because things are changing on the daily right so it started out early on in gosh this was probably early march 
Or early March. Early March, yeah. And she's like, well, you know, we'll, we'll just have you wear a mask if you have a runny nose or a fever or a cough. Like, that's all, you know, that's all we'll have you do is just wear a mask. And then, you know, every day it started to progress to the point where we were wondering, like, would he even be able to come? Like, because now they're saying that no family can come, like anyone under 16. So our first, uh, our first child would not have been able to come to the yeah. hospital with so us. So I think the order was, it was anyone under 16 was the first one yeah, that was to, the first to, time. to get nixed. <laughs> nixed. No, no, you cannot come. <laughs> yep. So that was, that was kind of a bummer. I know that yeah. that was really a bummer for us because Ugh. we did want our first to, to be with us. Yeah, I really wanted that. And then I was also wondering like, well, bummer, what happens if I go into labor at 2 a.m. and we can't get a hold of your parents, we can't get a hold of my parents, and then we have our two-year-old in the car with us, and then I'm definitely delivering on my own because you have to be with our two-year-old yeah yeah that was those were the thoughts going through that was thoughts going through her and christina is the futurist thinker (laughs) just really wants to make sure that everything is tied down i have a plan plan, so i have a plan which is great it was great for for the this all this happened and this is an exercise in flexibility (laughs) for me that's for sure yeah yeah so that was the first thing that happened was anybody under 16 could not come and then it it really got you know it really progressed very fast where no visitors at all Mm -hmm. thankfully in l and d in the labor and delivery they did allow a support person what they call and so one support person him and it had to be the same support person the entire time okay, so yeah. if, it wasn't a big deal for us but i imagine like other people if you had you know multiple family members that wanted to be a part of that experience uh, but for us no we were just planning on having him um, you know what that, that, that does remind me because this is the first time that we delivered at this specific hospital mm-hmm. so we did yep. go and do a tour yes and i do remember that that there that was a question that was asked because right. uh there, there was a family member there that their whole family wanted to come and right and it's it like was a, a cultural thing yeah. you know having yeah. a baby can be you know a whole family experience so. and everyone wants to take part in it and again for sure. bummer for us because our our family is close by and that they they yeah. did want to come right but that, see that the was baby something. afterwards yeah but that was not something that they were allowing you know the hospital so for sure i was i was pretty emotional about that because of course i wanted our first child you know i wanted to take pictures in the hospital too like with our our first child and now our second child you know yeah and all those things after but that did not happen until we got home (laughs) so that was kind of a bummer and then every day you know things were just changing and I got you know worried like what happens if you end up with allergies Mm -hmm. and they don't allow you or and you know I have to deliver on my own I was fully emotionally preparing to deliver this child by myself you were definitely preparing for that you you were (laughs) Yeah, you were mentally preparing that space yeah. that mm-hmm. I was not going to be there. Right, so. and that that was going to be my reality. But thankfully, <laughs> it did not come to that. But I was worried, you know, all the things, me as a nurse for sure, and knowing a lot more than the general public too, made it a little bit worse, I'm going to say. So I was worried that, you know, what happens if I'm sick? Are they going to take the baby from me? And we'd have to be, you know, isolated in two separate rooms like him in the NICU and, and me, you know, somewhere else, an ICU perhaps, you know. All of those thoughts were going through my mind. Like, I want to breastfeed, but how do I do that? You know, it's all all the things. Yeah, you definitely went down rabbit holes of thinking about the (laughs) the, the, the worst that could happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's good to to plan things out. But yeah, you are a nurse. And again, the kind of behind the scenes, you do know more. And that's kind of a difference between us, actually, now that you mention it, is that you you do know all the behind the scenes things. And Mm -hmm. I'm kind of still here, happy go lucky, whatever. Whatever I don't know can't harm me. Um, (laughs) So but once you explain those things, it's like, okay, I guess that could be a problem. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. It definitely made it worse that I'm a nurse. That's for sure. So in my brain. So thankfully he was able to come and stay when we delivered the baby. So grateful for that. We were planning though, a bunch of things, you know, we were planning on bringing masks to the hospital. Your brother sent us some N99s that look super cool. Yeah. He, um, he got those way before 
this even All started. This started. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, we did have the masks. We were planning on doing that. We had yeah. those packed. We were planning on food, just going <laughs> out and getting food because for our first child, yeah. he was born like, what, 45 minutes away. Like it was a pretty long drive yeah. to our the hospital we first delivered at. And so for that, we brought like this monster size cooler with food and stuff. We did. Know. We did overpack. Uh, also, the hospital was kind of out of the way. It wasn't close by anything. So we we're no. like, well, we don't mm -hmm. want to leave. And do we really want hospital food the whole time? I don't know. There weren't like restaurants around in that um, area. Like it's a pretty isolated hospital. So, so we decided to bring a cooler and we have to lug it around. And well, I had to lug it around. <laughs> um, Christina was lugging around a, a, a Baby, I, I was guess. lugging around a baby. Yeah. Thank you. So, but it was it was kind of a hassle, and like we yeah. we were just planning. You know what? This is a different hospital. It's close to everything. Way it's, closer to our house. It's a whole three years later after our, our firstborn, and so everyone does yeah, Uber yes. Eats and all this yeah. other stuff. So it's like, yeah, let's just order in and just order everything in, order all yeah. the things mm -hmm. in. Uh, so that was our plan. And then what happened? <laughs> No restaurants available anymore. <laughs> so, so that quickly changed. So you had packed. Did you actually end up packing a cooler? See, I don't I, remember. These yeah. Things. So still we were thinking, well, could I leave, mm -hmm. get food and come back? And we didn't know if the hospital we, would allow that. We did not know. And so we decided, you know what? We, we do need food. So okay. I did end up getting uh, a massive cooler, another massive cooler. Yeah. Uh, this one had wheels on it so this was that was a little easier <laughs> you were so prepared um, but yeah we we loaded that thing up it is also kind of fun this is this was this hospital again new hospital new experience that uh, labor and delivery and also postpartum was in the same room so that was that was yeah, nice we didn't have to move anywhere in yeah. our first hospital we i delivered in one room and then we had to move upstairs to the postpartum so i had unit. to lug the cooler <laughs> from one to like the fifth floor or something i don't like know that. what you're complaining about i had the baby the whole time and i had a baby inside of me I say that 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 trumps monster cooler sure. lugging it up the stairs. All right. <laughs> so we had planned for food and I had planned for delivering on my own. Those are probably the biggest kind of differences. We brought masks. We were, you know, wanting to make sure that anybody that came into their room, you know, washed their hands. Obviously, nobody was sick. When we got to the hospital, too, they were checking everybody's temperature. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is going on. Everyone's being super cautious. Everything was different. Which was really, really, you know, gave me a lot more peace of mind that, okay, this is okay, <laughs> you know. I guess the other so. thing that was also a blessing, again... This is a really great hospital that mm -hmm. the entrance was its own entrance. The, the whole building For was sure. separate mm -hmm. um, from from the rest of the hospital. So actually, it, it did feel safe. Yeah, it felt a lot safer. We didn't have to when we got there, you know, because labor and delivery was a completely like almost separate building. We didn't even have to go through the general hospital or, or through the emergency yeah. department. Like we have another hospital here that you have to go through the emergency room to get to labor and delivery. That was not the case for for the hospital we delivered at, which was so nice because yeah. we knew it was a little more isolated, a little more away from, you know, all the all the tents they had outside the emergency room. So we didn't have to go over in that area. It was a little bit safer for baby. So that yeah. was really, really nice. Definitely, definitely a blessing there. Mm -hmm. So that was our plan. We had planned to bring a cooler, planned to bring the masks, you know, all the things. We wanted to make sure that we were safe, baby was safe, everyone was safe. So I had been calling every day, like I said, and I finally went into labor, or what I thought well, was labor. I, I did not think I was in labor, you guys. Like, yeah. I did no, not No, we, we didn't know what it was. You definitely... I was in labor. You definitely started feeling... I Okay, for the record and for <laughs> some context, I was in pro-derma labor with our first from like, what was it, 28, 29 mm -hmm. weeks on. So I was having serious contractions regularly <laughs> with our first child that, I mean, by the time we got to the hospital with him, I mean, it was, yeah, go time. Thankfully for all those weeks of contractions, but for our second, that didn't happen. I wasn't in prodermal labor. So I was just having the, you know, standard kind of Braxton Hicks periodically, but it wasn't anything major. Yeah. And so 
it was about, it was like evening time, dinner time. And I started feeling like, okay, these contractions are getting more serious, but it was like the prodermal ones I had had before with our first. And so I was like, well, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> this is me again. Well, it's you, not that big of a you deal. Did, you did start timing it. And that's the other mm-hmm. thing too, is like uh, the timing would change. It would yeah. go down and then up. It was up, like 15 then... minutes apart 20 minutes apart 10 minutes apart and so like through the night I tried to get a little bit of sleep but they kept waking me up and so that's when I really started timing and I was like okay so it was like 10 I think it was about 10 15 at night and I really started timing them and I didn't sleep that night unfortunately but by the time you know morning came it was like I think it was about five in the morning Mm -hmm. when I had woke you up and I said this could be it contractions are you know five minutes apart and you know they're pretty intense I can still talk through them but you know they're they're there and they're five minutes apart so you I took took our first Mm -hmm. uh to to my parents Mm -hmm. and it's it's great that they they're just pretty close, pretty close, mm-hmm. and that uh, they were ready to. Uh, and, yeah. and, and again, this was early. This was two weeks before. Yeah, two weeks before planned, the due date. Due date. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, but thankfully, they're, they're they were ready. They were ready. So, yeah. brought her first up and said, "Okay, well, we'll we'll see what happens, and we'll we'll call you. Keep keep in touch." Yeah. I called my parents, told them, you know, baby's coming. Yeah. We're gonna go to the hospital. This was early um, morning. Yeah, five six yeah. around there. Yeah, five six a.m. And then I remember because I'm like, all right, so I'm gonna run up to to my parents and drop off our first and then run back and then we'll just jump in the car and then go. <laughs> so I came back and Chrissy is just like sitting there eating. <laughs> what are you doing? Let's go. And she's like, yeah, I think we're all right. It's okay. It's <laughs> not a big deal. I was like, well, the contractions, they kind of stopped. They were five minutes apart. Some were three minutes apart, but now they're like seven, ten minutes apart. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I was like, I can still talk through them. So, you know what we'll do? We'll just eat <laughs> and then I'm going to go take a nap. I told them that I was going to yeah. go take a nap. Because I didn't sleep that night. And so that's exactly what we did. We ended up eating. Eating. You and tried napping. <laughs> I did take a nap. I think okay. it was like an hour and a half. But still, I mean, I could still feel the contractions a little bit, but they weren't super intense. I did sleep. Mm-hmm. I did sleep, though. And I woke up. My mom had texted me, you know, how's it going? How's Where the hospital? Are you? Where, Where are, are you going to text us when you get there? Are you there yet? <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm like... Yeah, we're yeah. still at home. I'm taking a nap. Fine. <laughs> oh, man. It's fine. It's all good. No big deal. And so I woke up from the nap. And I think we ate probably a little bit more. Because yeah. you know you know, when you get to the hospital, you're not going to be eating right. So I was, like, stuffing my face. Yeah, that's the other thing. Again, difference from first to second. First... We were just went straight and we were starving the whole time. Yeah, so like that's were. that's one thing. They're like, oh, we're going to eat before we go and we're going to yeah. be full. And, yeah, we're yeah. going to be prepared for this. And yeah, so we ate more. And then what did I decide to do? I decided to do laundry yeah. and go watch a Hallmark movie. Well, we didn't have our first. And yeah. you know what? We had kind yeah. of cleared our schedule and everything. So what else? Can we do? We'll watch a Hallmark movie. We haven't done that in a while. I'll do laundry. We'll watch a Hallmark movie. It's all good. So we were watching the Hallmark movie and I was doing laundry and I started feeling like, okay, this could be real labor. But I was also worried because it kind of seemed to be stalling out. Like it was starting and stopping, which I thought was kind of weird. That did not happen with our first. So I just, I wanted to go in to make sure that he was okay. Yeah. Right. I really just wanted to make sure he was okay, So I didn't think it was real labor. I just thought that, you know, I just wanted to check on the baby. So we we drove down on the way down there. uh, You know, I call I think I called my mom or at least I texted my mom to say, okay, we're officially going to the hospital now. And she was, you know grateful and uh, I was also on the phone with Nicole who was our community manager for nursing SOS I was on the phone with her I was telling her okay (laughs) girl we're like going to the hospital now it's probably nothing it's probably (laughs) nothing but let's just have a team meeting here really quick because so I was like filling her in with all the things that we had to do and like get done and for the record she was six days postpartum herself (laughs) Nicole and I our community Community manager and myself were due in the same week. 
And she happened to have her baby six days earlier than I had mine. So that was fun. Yeah. So we're like, you know, we're on the phone. I'm going through all the things. <laughs> it's fine because I could still talk through the contractions, right? Like I could feel them. Yeah, that's they what they say. Intense, that, oh, but... you won't be able to talk or whatever. Yeah, right. They're like, they'll be like super intense. You won't be able to talk through them. Don't go to the hospital until, you know, they're intense, right? And that's not what happened. <laughs> So I was still able to talk through them. So I'm like, no, this is not real labor. So we get to the hospital and we go to triage and they hook me up to all these things, right? You know, you got all the monitors and the blood pressure and the contraction monitor, all the things. And the nurse said, well, I was like, well, they're coming and going. You know, the contractions are coming and going. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's real labor or not. And the nurse is like, it's probably not because... The contractions, when they start, they will, you know, most likely, you know, keep going or or probably it probably isn't real labor because when you're in real labor, contractions will just continue to get worse. Obviously, that's not the case <laughs> because she had looked at the monitor. The doctor came in. What were we? Six? Yeah, we were six seven? already and six centimeters and like all the effacement basically. Right. And the nurse had said, oh, yeah, your contractions are four minutes apart. But the thing was, is I was not feeling them. You I was feeling like every other one. I was feeling something. like every yeah. other one. And I was feeling like the bigger ones like yeah. you at one like, point <laughs> were looking at the monitor yeah. like, whoa, babe, you just went off yeah. the paper there. I was like, granted, you did feel tell that me one. about it. You did feel that one. But <laughs> I like that one. In between them, like, they're little... They're, like, you know, more... I don't know. They were, like, in the middle of the paper yeah. somewhere. So, and... They were I, definitely happening. Not, you I were just not, not feeling, feeling every single one. No. So that's why I'm thinking that... I was thinking that it was starting and stopping. It was probably just getting, you know, more intense each time. But I was just not, you know, aware of it. It was, like, yeah. tightening. But it wasn't, like, serious. I felt like it was not serious. Please, friends, if you are having a baby, don't listen to any. This is not advice. Like, go to the hospital. Listen to your doctor. Don't follow anything that I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's our second. I'll be fine. It's no big deal. So they send us to a room because the doctor's like, well, yep, you're in labor. You're staying. Yeah. And an hour later... <laughs> We made it to the hospital. We did make it to the hospital. So we <laughs> Just went in time. We were at triage at like 1130 in triage. And then, you know, they told us, yes, you're in labor. Go to a room. So we went to the room and. And I went and got my cooler, my giant cooler, and I lugged it on in and got all set up. That's my thing. It's my cooler. <laughs> <laughs> That's your baby. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so we're obviously having a baby. And it was like he was born, I think, two hours later. I was super worried that we were not going to make it to the hospital because just in the weeks leading up to delivery he was just so low and I could just feel it like I was like he's just gonna slip on out of there <laughs> kind of how I felt like how it happened but I, I you remember know, you saying hours. even uh, this is a tangent but whatever mm -hmm. I remember you saying well maybe that's a good thing maybe we'll just deliver at home anyway because we'll you didn't you didn't want to deal with all this no, whatever I didn't I was like why don't so, we just like have the baby at home of course if you guys have been around here for a while you know that I have a pacemaker so I do have heart stuff going on and the doctor's like, absolutely not. No home birth for you. No water birth for you. You're doing this thing in a hospital with doctors. No other option. So I was like, okay, well, I can I can do that. But maybe next time I'll like, like third baby. <laughs> you sure it's okay? I think I should make my own rules. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, famous last words. <laughs> right? So, you know, it was like two hours two hours of, um, you know, laboring at the hospital, mm -hmm. which was, you know, they definitely got more and more intense. And thankfully, seriously, praise the Lord for our first child. I pushed you guys. I pushed for three hours. Let's just, let's just have a moment for that. Three hours I pushed for that child to get him out. He came out like this. He got a little bit stuck. So everybody said. He was, he was like, he was, he was like, like this. Could you imagine? I did not only have to birth a head, I had to birth a head, a hand, a wrist, and an arm, and an elbow, all of it at the same time. That was very hard. For this one, I was so done. I was so done. This 
yeah. This whole thing, it was, it was very quick. Yeah, it was very quick. So by the time pushing came, like literally it was like, I think, wasn't I on my side? And I was like, I'm just, didn't they say that? I'm just going to lay down for just a couple, just a couple minutes on my side. And then, you know, I'll, I'll start, you know, back up, like laboring, whatever. And this is like a natural delivery. I, for both Yep. for all of the kids we'll ever have. I just don't want any medications or anything. So I didn't have an epidural. I didn't have any medications. I was just, just me. And so I was on my side. I was like, I'm just going to rest for a little bit. And immediately, I think when I said yeah, that, my know. water broke. And I remember saying two things. I remember saying, water, pushing. <laughs> That's all I remember saying. <laughs> so it was, it was interesting watching from this side of the bed. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because definitely uh, leading up to it, yeah, you were pushing and dilation and effacement uh, was occurring. Yeah. And then uh, you were not quite there. No. Um, but but then, contractions and but all the things. Not pushing, not, but like yeah. contractions, you know. Yeah, and not at all. It was okay. It was fine. Yeah. And then. And, but then once, once the water broke, that was like go time. It was like, it got real real quick and <laughs> yeah i, I kind of laughed at myself because like before even <laughs> while we were while we were driving to the hospital we were like well my water hasn't broke i would it would be nice to have that kind of experience that oh my water broke time to go into the hospital yeah. like like the movies or whatever it's like <laughs> all right time to go i haven't asked you yet yeah actually that <laughs> Was that a fun experience? <laughs> that was not a fun experience. No? Okay. I do not want that to happen going forward in my life. No. Can you imagine it happening just... At home. At home. It's like, oh. And then having the serious water. contractions on the way to the hospital. No, thank you. Okay. I do not want to have that. But I have heard that, like, if your water breaks and you're not quite there yet, then it's, like, not that bad. Okay. You know, but who knows? It's different for everybody. <laughs> but... For me, I know both times for both kids, my water has broken right before I delivered in okay. both cases. Even after three hours of pushing for our first, my water did not break until, until the, the very, very last second. Very end. Very end. So same thing for our second. So my I was on my side. My water yeah. broke. And I just remember saying that. I, I said, ow, water, ow, pushing. Yeah. <laughs> Those are actually the four things I said. Ow, water, ow, pushing. And uh, so I, I turned and I, I was pushing. And four minutes, you guys, four minutes. I and was four pushes. so done. Four pushes. Yeah, something like that. It was that. like kind of an extended push. I was like, I'm not stopping. Get this baby out Ugh. of me. I am done. You are not listening to what they were saying. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like... You try to have a baby and listen to what they're saying. Well, because yes, you were just constantly pushing and they're like, stop, 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 because you need to get a breath to, to do the final push. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so they were, and you're like, what? What did you say? What? Yeah, I actually asked her, I was like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I think I literally did ask yeah. her that. Like, what am I supposed to do? Just Tell stop. me what I'm Just supposed stop. to do. And they told me to stop. And then I, like, took a little breath in. And then yeah. final push. And I think yeah. he, his head came out. Or, like, did uh, everything come shoulders. out? It, that was, oh, that yeah. was the shoulders. Okay. Yeah. I was so yeah. done. Four minutes of pushing. Praise the Lord. It and was it was really quick. Like yeah. when when it started too, because for our first, you're like, oh, can I get a mirror? Because you wanted to see and stuff. Yeah. They didn't even get that out. No, like, they were like pulling it out. <laughs> and yeah, literally. I the doctors told me that I scared them. So afterwards, like the doctors and nurses, they were like, yes, we were very worried because actually before this, I was in the tub. I told them I was like, can I just be like in the tub, like in the shower? Can well, just, you know, like, again, for the, the first, tub? that helped the, the most. With the pain is you in the tub and we yep. had the little uh, the shower, the shower head, head down just, just on my back on your back yeah, you that just was really like that perfect. and like it was taking a little while for the for you complete dilating mm -hmm. and all that so like well can we just go in the can i just go shower? in the tub for a little bit like just well he might fall out in the tub i don't know yeah they were <laughs> really worried about me because it was like almost there and by the time we got from the shower to the bed it had only been two contractions and then the water and then broke. my water broke <laughs> so, so praise the lord we made it you guys <laughs> or that baby would have been delivered in that tub. At the we would have had a water birth. We would have had a water hey. birth. That was my dream. Yeah. yeah. So it all worked out and he was healthy, happy. Apgar score was eight. It's out of 10. I think he was an eight. Our first was a nine. I think he was a little more blue. Yeah, I think that's what it was. 
is what they told us. Yeah. yeah. He was a little more blue, but he was good. So that was that really, really quick. And then, you know, so we d- couldn't have family there. The nurses, you know, they did seem to limit how many people were in the room. You know, there really was uh, like, especially postpartum, you know, only one nurse really at a time. And, you know, the doctors, every, you know, everyone kind of leaves and, you know, kind of clean up and everything and my parents did bring us food at the hospital they dropped it off outside the hospital to him apparently that was okay that i could leave the lobby and go into the uh, driveway <laughs> and then get come the back. food and then come back <laughs> yeah so as so. long as they had like visual of what i was doing <laughs> they didn't have to like check my temperature again or do anything like that yeah so yep so that was nice we did have food we did like burgers right yes and a milkshake because you know after a baby, you have a burger. That's <laughs> what happens. <laughs> so, yep, we did that. My parents did that. And we were only there for six hours after. That was another huge difference between, well, just regular labor and delivery in the United States. <laughs> we like to have our mamas stay at the hospital for, it depends on if you had a natural birth or vaginal birth or cesarean section or c-section but anywhere from like 24 to maybe 36 hours after you deliver your baby in the u.s that's kind of our standard Mm -hmm. now they let us go after six hours they're like we haven't really done this before and we're not sure but let's check the doctors not sure how it's gonna work do we really do this they said that they did have that discussion that morning before we even came yeah. in that the, they circled up and they were talking and they're like, OK, well, maybe if everything is perfect, then after six hours after baby, then they could uh, they a mom and mom, dad and baby could go home. Yeah. And they were just toying with that that, that idea that morning mm-hmm. is what they said. And then we're like, hey, we want to do that. Can we, we, can, can we try that? Um, you guys know, I'm like, let's just have the baby go. <laughs> so I was like, please, after six hours, yeah, we, please we let us Yeah, we didn't want to stay there. They no. didn't want to. Well, I'm sure they could have accommodated it. But yeah. everything everything went ideally with, mm-hmm. with him. And, and we're very low risk. We would not have left if I was high risk. Like if I had hypertension, pre- preeclampsia, or glucose issues, or, you know, any risk of bleeding at all. Um, you know, thankfully, I was, you know, breastfeeding really, really you know, well, that was all the stuff. He was a champ, like right out the gate. And, you know, so everything seemed to be going well. Um, you know, everything might um, (laughs) hope that no guys are like watching this video. My (laughs) uterus was contracting really well, just like it should no bleeding problems, you know, none of that, or they wouldn't have let us go. Right. So we were very low risk. It was the low risk and Mm -hmm. the ideal Yep. Birth. And even the doctor said, like, the doctor said, you're probably the perfect candidate to do this the first time because, like, there's really no, genuinely it no is, issues with you or the baby. And it is our second. Yeah. I felt like that if it was our first, they wouldn't have no. let us go. No, but because so. it was our second, you know, we're like, please let us go. <laughs> we just wanted to go home. And, uh, yeah, it had been a long kind of... Uh, you know, 48 hours. Yeah, so he was born at 159, mm-hmm. and then we were just kind of hanging wow. out, um, doing the tests. That's the other thing, too, is that they want to get as many tests done as possible. Yep, um, before we left. Before we left, and also the stipulation is that we come back in 24 hours right. to do the, the last bit of testing and just to yeah. check check on him. But All the 24-hour labs that you yeah. have to do after a baby is born, uh, particularly the Billy room and, like, the jaundice test, they had to do that. So we did have to go back to the hospital 24 hours later. Yeah. Um, uh, a little over 24 hours later, they told us. So yeah. we did end up doing that, and then we had uh, two days later, two right, day we had yeah. the weight check you know make sure it was the lactation appointment so make sure his weight's gaining well and you know breastfeeding is going well and all those things so it was pretty smooth after that you know like i said second child he was a champ with feeding like no issues kids gaining weight like crazy (laughs) so i had no concerns genuinely yeah no, it, and he was also a lot less jaundice than his brother his brother was a lot more jaundice um you know with you being filipino that was you know, an issue. We actually weren't sure if they would let us go after six hours because of the jaundice thing. Yeah, we were but wondering about that. They, he did. They did yeah. take a jaundice test right when we were there in the hospital. They did. And, and then he they, passed. Yeah, he right? passed. Yeah. Okay, he did pass. Everything just 
lined up and it was just a blessing uh, yeah. that we were yep. able to do that. So uh, I guess the other thing that they were kind of worried about too was the hearing test the because hearing test, yeah. usually mm -hmm. they don't do that until a lot later, but mm -hmm. he they did it like right before he left and he passed. So he passed. Everything was, was good. Fine. Yep. The pediatrician saw him. The doctor saw me. No issues. You can go. And so we got home at 830 around there. Yeah. And the first thing that we did. So another difference is the first thing that we did was we <laughs> took off all our clothes, baby us. We all took a shower like we bathed him way sooner than we bathed our first child and you know we're like okay clothes in the laundry we're taking showers we are sanitizing everything that went to the hospital with yeah, us i remember that, that or we my threw cooler away. needed to be sanitized and it <laughs> took a long time because it's a big cooler i was yeah. sanitizing it <laughs> did the whole thing yeah. our phones our glasses like we lysol clorox whatever everything <laughs> so that was tough and still you know like anytime uh you know you go we go out anywhere we're still like okay clothes off let's shower um you know clothes in the in the laundry want to make sure everything is clean so that's yeah. what we did when we came home from the hospital which hopefully helped yeah and so definitely that's that's another like you said it's another difference because right out the gate we bathed him a lot right sooner. out of the gate yeah. he got he got a bath yep so. and they were actually doing that in the hospital they asked oh, us yeah. if we wanted to have a bath uh in the hospital because they usually don't do that nowadays but with everything going on they do because they want to you know bathe the babies right after they come out decrease possible contamination um but we said no because we were leaving yes yeah. <laughs> so we're like right. see you later Bye. we'll, we'll do, do it when we get home <laughs> <laughs> yeah bye so that's how that worked out again don't take this as advice friends this is not medical advice don't listen to us don't do what we do, do what we say not as we do <laughs> That's the moral of this story. You guys asked, so we're telling. That's about it. <laughs> That's about it. Unfortunately, though, with all of this happening, my parents did not see him until two weeks, roughly two weeks after he was born. Mm -hmm. And so talk about, like, my emotions postpartum. <laughs> Let's just talk about the breakdowns I had after this baby. I mean, it was easier because we were all home. So it was easier in that extent. It was our second child. We weren't, like, shocked as far as, you know, all these things are happening and, you know, this huge change. No, it was really just, you know, we're big. Not that it wasn't like a huge change and not a big deal. It's a big deal having another baby. But but we were more prepared for it. We knew what to do. We already knew how to change a diaper. It's no big deal. Yeah. So that, that was better. But the thing was really emotional for me was the fact that my parents could not see him. And I just bawled my eyes out. I could not handle that. Yeah, you did have a tough time with that. That was very difficult in, um, you know... Well, it was very difficult for the whole two weeks, right? I mean, we did we did the FaceTime. Yeah, technology is like, great. Um, yeah, FaceTime we did that or um, pretty much every day we, yeah. we did that and are still doing that so, every day. Yeah, so, technology is great. I mean, I know that you're you're trying to figure out. Okay, well, what if they just stand outside the window, or what if they just? Do this I or was whatever. trying to go through like Try, all trying of the to ways. figure it out, just trying to. Oh, how can they? See? But all of the ways to figure <laughs> out um, how, you know, how I can make it work and kind of like finagle it right to and make hold their sure. breath or whatever. <laughs> Don't sneeze, <laughs> you know, all those things. But no, we did, we did do the, the whole 14 day thing. And, uh, now my parents are able to see him. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was very emotional there in the beginning. That was very, very hard for me because with our first, my mom was here constantly helping out, you know, holding him, letting me shower or sleep or all the things. But then also the, uh, the other positive thing is that you were not going to work. It was actually because you quit your job last year because you're now the CEO of Nursing SOS. So we both actually work from home by default. So uh, he was not for our, for our second, he was not going to work every day. And yeah. Still is that, not that, going to work every day. That was definitely different. Yeah. Um, nice. Having to, with our first still get up and then go to work and then come home and then mm -hmm. de deal with, deal with that. So yeah, yeah, it was definitely a blessing to, to be able to just stay at home. Mm hmm. Also with our first, like, I really didn't take any time off at all. No, <laughs> you so. didn't. But yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely more, I think more tough, like in that postpartum for me, because it's like a first child and you don't know 
what you don't know when you have your first baby. So this did go a lot smoother for that fact that he was home and helping out and we were getting more sleep because of that. But then still not seeing my parents was a huge deal for me. I, I just bawled my eyes out constantly. That was very, very tough. That was really tough. Thankfully, um, my parents were around to help out with mm -hmm. our first. And they had so been they, quarantining, uh, yeah. you know. And so th they were able to take our first, and mm -hmm. uh, he really loves spending the nights there now. Yep. Um, so it, w it was nice to, to have that kind of respite a little bit. Yeah, um, it did help out a lot. Yeah. Yep. I do have questions that our Instagram friends wanted to know. So let me grab those. We have Instagram friends? I have Instagram friends. Do you no, have Instagram friends? I do not. I do not have friends. <laughs> you don't have friends. Okay, <laughs> let me pull these up. Uh, how was it having a baby during a pandemic? I hope we covered that. It was crazy bananas. Not so. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. It was different. It, yeah. I'm going to go with it was different. Mm, 10 out of 10 <gasps> would do again. <laughs> if we could do the six hour thing again, that would you be did, totally You did ask me. about that and they're like, eh, no. <laughs> yeah, I asked. I was like, so next time can we leave after six hours? Like, can you just put it in my chart or something? Like, put it in there like, by the way, doctor, for the next baby, she can leave after six hours. And they're like, absolutely not. <laughs> So one time okay. thing, uh, breastfeed or bottle feed breastfeed. I have breastfed both of our babies. None of them were on formula, but for the first one, we did do bottles because we wanted, I wanted you to be able to feed him. Yep. Right. So I did pump a little bit. <laughs> that's the difference between the first and the second. And now I'm like, please. Okay. That's another difference, no. right? Because we didn't do as much skin to skin. Right. For this skin one. Skin and yeah. this one's like, no, you'll just feed him. And like, you don't need a bottle feed him. He's no, fine. It's no big deal. So. No big deal because I, I just don't want to clean any bottles right i don't want to this is such a hassle and then also if you're breastfeeding and bottle feeding if have you guys done this like breastfed and bottle fed because you're waking up like every hour it's not like yeah you need to pump anyway i have to pump anyway like it hurts it physically <laughs> hurts if you go past a certain amount of time so i had to pump anyway i was up anyway yeah. so i was like well i mean that kind of defeats the purpose of <laughs> bottle feeding in my mind. I mean, you don't get to feed him. You don't get that like emotional, but do you feel like emotionally disconnected from him because no, you're not, not bottle feeding all. him? <laughs> like, not, not at all. Yeah. So it's not so. a big deal. All right. Next question. Hospital or home birth? I wish it was a home birth, but they don't let me do that. So hospital nope. birth for this one, maybe I'll get away with it next time. We'll see. Or the time after know. that. By the way, how many kids do you want to have? Um, however many you want. I think it depends on who you ask in this relationship. Because I <laughs> I felt like when we started having kids, I said, okay, my number's five. Like, I want five kids. That sounds like okay. a good number. I want five kids. And then we had our first, and I was like, maybe we just have five more kids. <laughs> and then now so we have our second. So that's, that's going to be the answer is just five more. Yeah, I just want five so. more. No, this is the same thing. I just, I think five more would be great. So that was the, now we're up to seven. My thing is always we'll even number, right? Because they, I would always heard that even number so there's no middle child syndrome so yeah. i don't know the middle child syndrome being like the one that's left out yeah 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 they like eventually will take care of each other and it'll be fine we'll have like nine kids we'll have like 12 kids <laughs> that see that doesn't sound like too many in my mind <laughs> well <laughs> again fine. at a good. certain point in time they're gonna start raising themselves yeah so you know it's fine yeah, it's fine that's fine yeah because by the time we get to, like, nine, then our oldest will be... <laughs> yeah. The oldest one can take care of him. It's yeah. just... A, a, a cycle. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a cycle. So, yeah, it is hospital <sighs> for this one. Yep. And then the next yeah. question is, how long was it? I think all in total, it, depending on, like, how you count the whole labor process... Um, because I did go into labor. Yeah, I'd maybe, say that you went I in guess. to labor the previous night. The night before. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, but it didn't really feel like that to me until really like an hour before he yeah. came out, I felt like. And I'm glad that we went to the hospital when we did because I may have pushed it a little too far. Yeah, there was a couple really key timing things that we were just really blessed to have hit mm -hmm. that we actually went in. Yeah, when we did. That we did, mm. and and not later. And then also probably the biggest one is that you came out of the shower when you did. <laughs> yeah. Like those I, are the two. That, that was probably the bigger one because I was like literally two contractions after I got out of that tub, he was born. Yeah. <laughs> so 
there's the thing. Very, very blessed. Yeah, the doctor said, yeah, you made us nervous. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were all sitting out there like, you know, hmm, just waiting, making sure that uh, this baby's not going to slip out in the bathtub. <laughs> oh, well. So that is what it was like to have a baby during a pandemic. Now, I also do not want to forget that we have... Dun, 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 our YouTube comment of the week. And this one comes from Haley. Hi, Haley. Haley. <laughs> Haley. <laughs> Thank you so much for this video. You explained it so clearly. ABGs are on my nursing exam coming up. If you guys need help with ABGs, we have lots of videos about them. I think it's a pretty cool explanation of them. And I think it really helps you out. I have so. a question. What are ABGs? <laughs> Arterial blood gases. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. all right. Not a nurse. Totally fine. <laughs> I love it. It's hilarious. But he does edit all the videos. And he'll come to me and be like, I did not know that was a I've thing. I've learned so much. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and it's all the videos for YouTube and our Nursing SOS membership community. The membership community is really where the majority of all those things are because we do all the patho videos, all, you know, videos on nursing assessment and interventions for all the disorders and everything, signs and symptoms. Like, we cover it all inside of our membership community. So you learn a lot yeah. by editing those videos. It's pretty pretty great. amazing. Do you feel yeah. like you could go to nursing school or that you would want to go to nursing no. school? No. 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 It takes a special person yeah. and that is not me. <laughs> it's awesome. So this was different. If you guys liked this video and you want to see Matthew more, you want to see more behind the scenes stuff, you want to just sit down and chat with us, <laughs> totally cool. Let us know in the comments below because that could be kind of fun to do more often. And like I said, in a future video in a couple of weeks, I think, right? A couple of weeks, yeah. I will be, we will be posting a video on the study strategies that I used to get straight A's in nursing school. Do you think you could get straight A's in nursing school? I could get straight letters. <laughs> I'm not sure what letters those would be. <laughs> what letters do I need to pass? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, man. So we will be posting that video up. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell so you do not miss out because friends, seriously, <laughs> seriously, it's going to help you so much. And do you want to point? Where do we point? There's two of us. Uh, I think it'll be right down here is here? where I'm going to put it. OK. Yeah, I'm going to try anyway. All right. You know what I say? Yes, but you can say it. Click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school. And my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. Not me. <laughs> you. And we'll catch you in the next video. Take care, friend. Bye-bye.